talking with Craig Blanco, who has uh, come to Indian Springs today to uh, take a look at a proposed timber harvest. And Craig, could you just give a little of your background, what what, what you do and how long you've been at it? Uh, I'm a consulting forester here in Fort Bragg, and I started working in the woods 1979, so I've been at it about 30 years. And uh, <clears throat> until recently, I worked pretty closely with uh, Linwood Gill, and then this year, Linwood and I... Uh, kind of split up some of the old clients and he has his own business and I'm still doing a little bit on my own as well. We, we tend to do a lot of uh, single tree selection. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our landowners are all ranches and family run kind of operations mm -hmm. so the whole aesthetic thing is very important for us and a lot of times we maybe in, ended up uh, giving up productivity to you know to, to uh, save aesthetic value so we just do things a little bit different than a lot of people. All right, well, we're going to walk down in here and okay. uh, you see how the marking goes, and then we'll get some comments as you go along. Sure. Thank you. See, so here's their cluster here, because you've got yeah. the so few the, tan oaks in back of here, the little fir yeah. over there, and then everything here. But it ends right yeah. there. To me, this is the is a, the perfect little laboratory for looking at this because you got one. Actually, there's there's five five tree stumps in this little area here, yeah. and and yeah. four of them are left untouched. Yeah, and one of them is removed completely, uh, including the good and the bad. Yeah, no, you're right. So it's like, uh, and, and it's not like you couldn't come through here. You could come. You, know, you you could cut fifty percent of those stems out of there and. And, and, you know, you're only going to capture maybe 20% of the volume, but you're going to be leaving your best tree. Right. you got three nice trees here. I would take, you know, you could do some thinning right. you know, for spacing. Right. But, Definitely. by God, I wouldn't take my better trees out of right. there, you know. What you're doing here, you're, you're taking out mm -hmm. you four, three of your, of your nicest redwood trees in this group. Right. And this tree is only, shit, it's only an 18-inch tree. Right. Mm -hmm. That tree is it's just getting ready. It's just getting ready to take off. So my mm -hmm. tendency would be to leave a tree like this. Mm -hmm. I would take this little one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let this benefit from removing that fir tree. Right, right. Now, if their whole trip here is to open up another age class, right. my tendency would be try to do it with uh, some of the bigger trees. You know what I mean? Right. Cut some of the bigger trees. And I know, I know you guys have the whole. QMD thing. Yeah, but if you look at that tree behind you, that to me, that's a tree that. See that tree with the this fire, one right see here. The fire damage right. in it. Right. Yeah. There's going to be defect in that tree, and that would be. Right. That would be a tree that we would take. Right. And we would be leaving these 18 uh -huh. redwoods here. Right. And and then you would probably take if you were doing that, would you take out the. We, we, we would. We would love it? to. We would love to. And, you know, we try to take out. Uh, uh, those, at least those three or three or four near ones, you know what I mean? Right. You could come through here and cut out 60% of the stems right. and only remove 25% of the volume and, right. you're, and, and you're still going to get another age class. It's not like you're not going to get sprouts. The first person who called my attention to this kind of thing was uh, Peter Twight. Forester from Santa Cruz, and that was when we were looking at that railroad gulch thing that John Helms, where right. John had done that, right. and, and we went back in, and Peter was looking at it. We had a field trip there one day years ago, 15 years ago, and what Peter said, he said, "Hey, you know, there's nothing the matter with taking out these groups, except that he would have gone through the whole forest once and cleaned it up." taken out the defective trees, taken out the suppressed trees, taken out the non-productive trees, and then let the then, then let the stand grow for maybe 10 or 15 years, and then come back and maybe make his initial group opening. Uh -huh. That was, you know, I thought uh -huh. that was, you know, Peter mentioned that on the field trip, and I'll never forget that, and I thought he didn't right. have a bad idea. And so what's happening here, they haven't really worked through this once, nope. okay? No. They, they're, this is this is the initial time through, right. and they're already going ahead and making their groups. And you know, I, I guess you know if you really need to have that, you have to evaluate how bad do we need young young sprouts in this clump versus the the productivity we're giving up by cutting those a, a dominant 18 and 20 inch trees. Right. So it's, I guess it's a trade off. Mark and I, Mark. Uh, um, 
Mark Jamison and I talked about mm -hmm. this, and mm -hmm. I mentioned that to Mark about P Peter Twight's idea, and Mark said, well, mm -hmm. there's just different ways of doing it, and, and it is. And so I think the, the, the question here is, A, how bad do you need to open it up for other age class, and right. B, what are you willing to give up for that? Right. Because it's a trade-off. So, and there's so, there is a sacrifice well, in terms of productivity yeah, you, you go to make this cut kind a, of... Cut a 20-inch tree, I mean, right. that, that's a tree that's, that's really going to start working for you and putting a lot of volume on. Well, you know, I, you know, you need to look at it at a landscape level too, and by that I mean all fifty thousand mm -hmm. acres. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, are 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 young age classes lacking on the fifty thousand acres of the state forest? Right. If the answer is yes, then something like this you, you could sort of justify. Mm -hmm. If if the answer to that is no, then my gosh, I wouldn't worry about starting a new size class in here. I would worry about getting that twenty tree, right. twenty inch tree up to a right. thirty inch right. tree. Well, they have plenty of younger age classes. Well, so the, the, those are the kind of things a, a guy needs to look at, right. you know. Right. I mean, you never have a, generally, you don't, most timber stands don't have problems with having. Too many old trees. Yeah, right. <laughs> too many big trees. You know right. what I mean? It, you do have it problems, but generally you right. can, it, it, right. too many big trees isn't a big problem. You can right. deal with that. Right. You know, and, and look, look at it from this standpoint, too. I mean. One of the questions you need to ask in here is, uh, the first question I posed was, okay, do you need to open another age class, okay? And on a landscape basis, that may or may not be. The second question is, how big do you want to grow your trees? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Er earlier I said we have a target size to get into that 30, 32, 34 inch right. age class because we get a high percentage of heartwood in the bulk of the tree, right. okay? Especially right. in the lower... Uh, a couple logs, right. but when you take an 18 or a 20 inch tree, look at how much the, the high percentage of sapwood. So right. there's a and the market's really reflecting that according to Willits. Absolutely, now, you you don't get anywhere near the same price. There's a there, right now. There's probably about a two hundred dollar premium for the larger wood. Right. But that don't forget that's a delivered log right. price. If right. you worked that back to stumpage. Uh, it could be a 50 percent. So right. it's a big incentive right. to grow your trees a little bit bigger. Right. That's what we that's what we feel. Right.